Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make an RPG in Unity and welcome to episode 41. In this tutorial we're going to add some tags, we'll make some moving ledges and we'll also bring in uh, another enemy, a skeleton I think, for a little battle arena down underneath this trap door. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else about game development on my channel and if you've enjoyed this series so far please feel free to check out my Patreon or YouTube memberships where you'll earn things like early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. With that in mind let's get to work. So last tutorial we made this trapdoor which brings us all the way down into what appears to be oblivion right now. Uh, so down here what I want to do is make another area where we fall down We've got some moving ledges and we'll start to build that battle arena for another boss battle or you know something similar because i want to bring in a cool new enemy so what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly build up the environment down below here and i'm going to explain what we're going to do with moving walk uh, well moving ledges i should say so the moving ledge is going to be a section of the game where we are able to kind of just get on a ledge and it will move us along. Uh, so obviously that requires some specific type of coding and it requires us uh, to use something called tags. Now tags are a great way of defining what a particular game object is. So for example, we can define the player as the player rather than just a game object, which is almost uh, impossible to detect what it truly is. So that is why we're going to use tags. So I've nearly built up this little section now. And I'm hoping you guys have probably already built all of this for your game. And you won't be needing to actually do any of what I'm doing right now. If I can align that to there, there we go. So that is that section. And I think right now, if we were to fall through the trap door, we would land on ground, and we do indeed. So down here is where we're going to carry on. Uh, let's build this little section up a tiny bit more, and we'll have our moving ledges here, I think, somewhere there. So I'm going to quickly add these here. And while I'm at it, if you guys want to share what you've made so far in this series, please do, because I would absolutely love to see what you are making, what your game looks like, and how well you are progressing. Because you have to remember, these tutorials aren't just about showing you how to make all of this. It's about me seeing how well you're doing with it. Because if I don't have the ability to see what you're creating, and I can't really tell you what's best for your game, and I always love to see what people have created. You may also give others inspiration for creating things as well. So we are pretty much there now. So we have a hallway. So now let's make a moving ledge from here over to the other side. So to do that, I'm going to use the same uh, con rather same texture, same game objects as the floor. I'm going to hold control, press D, but I'm actually going to reduce the size to probably about five by five and also one on the y five does look a bit too small i think uh we may get yeah, i think we're gonna need to increase that i've also put four as well not five uh so let's put six by six so basically i'm just trying to fill this section here with that game object there we go six by six so obviously the um actual material on there isn't the best material to use so Let's create uh, that new material for it. So let's go to the materials folder, if I can find it down here. Oh, it's somewhere. There it is. So um, I am going to create a new material. So right click, create and material. I will have this ledge mat. And I am going to basically just apply the same uh, texture so we'll take that cobblestone texture uh, which is in that textures folder and we'll place it on the uh, material there so let's select our ledge mat and we will add the texture over to there 
add the normal map and let's apply that texture to there. Now I want this to be a slightly different colour as we can see simply because I want to determine or want to differentiate between the floor and the actual ledge itself. So this is going to be our ledge. So let's rename this to ledge. So let's say ledge 001. And I'm going to span it three sections across. Now to determine how far we need to stretch it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it to there and again to there. Then take the floor again, duplicate that and place it the other side of the ledge. So we can already see what the ledge is going to do, where and how far it's going to move. So once we have that in place, we can then get rid of those two placeholders. And now we need to set the animation for our ledge to move around. So let's go to the animations and let's go to dungeon 01. Uh, make sure we have our ledge on. Let's go to animation, click on create, and let's have ledge 001 move. And now what we need to do is create the animation. We've done animation before. I'm not going to go over it all over again. I'll just briefly explain what we're going to do. So let's set that first keyframe, zero, and we're going to be doing this all on the X position. So let's set it as 59.03. Uh, actually, it's going to be the Z, isn't it? Because we're moving this way. Sorry, my apologies. So 62.29. And let's say by five seconds, we want it to be over here. And then by 10 seconds, so 600th frame, it's all the way back over here. So the ledge should move between these two places constantly. So press the record button again to stop the animation. And let's press play switch back to the scene view, and then we should be able to see this ledge moving back and forth between the two locations. As soon as Unity decides that it wants to start itself. Sometime today, Unity. Okay, so let's go back to the scene and we should see the ledge moving. Excellent. So that will move indefinitely between these two places. That's exactly what we want. The key to this is, if we were to go through this now and stand on the ledge, nothing would actually work for us. So I'll quickly show you what I mean now. So if we go through our dungeon, down our trap door, it's a little bit dark down here. So there's our ledge coming towards us. So if we get on this ledge now, we're just going to stand still. It's not going to take us with us. Now. The reason for that is because we're not attached to that object. That object will not carry something that is on top of it. The physics do not simply work like that. We have to become part of that object. So in order to do so, we need to tag our player uh, with the player tag. So if we click on FPS controller, click on tag at the top, click player. That means that we can now determine that our player is actually named player. It's not just an object now. It's not just an untagged object. That means that we can get ourselves onto this ledge and actually travel across it with a little bit of extra code. In order to do that, we need to duplicate the ledge. So hold control, press D on the ledge, remove the animator from that duplicate, and also remove the mesh renderer from that duplicate. Let's rename the ledge to ledge holder. And then couple that to the ledge 001 and then make sure that ledge holder is above like so. So now this is like going to be, you can think of it as a trigger that we can step onto and move across with the ledge. So because it's a trigger, let's tick is trigger. Now let's create a C sharp script for it. So let's go to our scripts folder and let's go to dungeon and then right click create C sharp script and we'll have this as ledge 001 and let's open that up in Visual Studio. So you'll soon see why we've had to tag our player, uh, the player tag. Uh, so it's simply because I think I touched upon it last time with the trap door. It's so as only the player can actually be uh, transported across 
that um, ledge. I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference at the moment because there's nothing else that would really interfere with it. But just to be safe, we're going to do that anyway. So what do we need to do here? Well, we need to reference uh, a couple of different things. We need to say that the player is going to be a pair or rather a child of the parent object, the ledge. And then when we exit it, we go back to normal. So in order to do so, we say, get rid of those. And let's add in some variables. Public game object, the ledge, semicolon, and then the player. So public game object, the player, semicolon. So like I said, it's going to be using the on trigger enter. So void on trigger enter. Uh, it doesn't need to be private. But you'll notice in the parentheses we have another statement of a variable which is known as other and it is a collider. We do need to have that in there because this is now where we can de uh, determine what tag is attached to whatever has entered this trigger. So we can say if and in brackets other dot tag equals player then do the following. Now you have to note here, if you've decided to call your player a different tag name, so for example, you've decided to set your tag as finish or something, whatever you want, you just have to make sure that that tag name is here. So we're saying if the tag is equal to player, then do the following. The player dot transform dot parent equals the ledge not the player, <laughs> the ledge dot transform, semicolon. So now, by that same standard, we need to do void on trigger exit. And then doesn't need to be private again, but we do need to have that statement, the variable in there. So we're going to do the exact same thing here. So copy that if statement. And this line here, the player dot transform dot parent, we need to make it equal to nothing. So it's its own parent object again. So we just put null and then save. So the script is as simple as that. And because the ledge holder is an object within the ledge itself, that ledge holder will always move with whatever object it's attached to. So to get this whole sequence working, we need to attach ledge 001 to the ledge holder. And then the ledge, which is going to be the main parent object, and then the player there. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to keep this here. And I want you to keep an eye on this as I go through this and climb onto the ledge, because you'll see the FPS controller suddenly appear down here when we step onto this ledge. And then it will disappear when we step off. So let's try this out. So let's do this as usual. Let's open the gate. Let's fall down. There we go. So now let's step onto the ledge as soon as it gets closer. There we go. You'll see the FPS controller has done that. Right, now I noticed a little something there. I think uh, it was a bit of a glitch. So you'll notice as we step on, the camera angle changes. I believe that may be because the ledge is actually rotated at 90 degrees. So I'm going to see what happens now if we change that to zero. I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen, but we'll soon see. So let's go to our scene view and check. Okay, so yeah, that, that was the only problem there. It decided, it decided it was going to be rotated by 90 degrees. So, let's redo that. But hopefully you notice there that the... Um, I think we need a light down there, don't we? That the player was coupled to that ledge. So we'll eventually... There we go. So on we get. And... Off we get. There we go. Now, if you don't have that on trigger exit, what will happen is even when you step off the ledge, you will still continue to move back and forth with the ledge. 
So that's just something to keep in mind. That's why you need the void on trigger exit. So over here, this is going to be a bit of a battle arena thing because we're going to have some cool skeleton enemy to come and attack us. So while we're on that topic, let's head to the asset store and let's get ourselves a skeleton enemy. So, well, I suppose it doesn't have to be a skeleton. You could use any enemy you want at all. Uh, I've used this skeleton enemy before. I quite like it. So I'm going to go with it again. So skeleton. And ooh, there's some nice skeletons, although they are paid. I mean, if you want to pay, by all means, please do, because there really are some intriguing assets. Uh, as everything that we do in these tutorials is free, I'm going to go with free down here. And I'm going to choose this fantasy monster skeleton. He is a very nice asset. He's easy to use. So if you want to follow along in the exact footsteps as me, then yeah, choose this one as well. So let's import him. Right, so next tutorial, guys, what we're going to do is we are going to create some extra little bit of work to uh, our movement here, i.e. if we fall, uh, we need to either go to another place to climb back up or we respawn or something. So we, we'll figure something out. Uh, and we're also going to deal with our skeleton in this battle arena. So we're going to deal some more with AI. We're going to deal with attacking him. And we might even deal with some boss music, I guess, or something like that. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.